Hi guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBunch.com. Today what we're going to talk about is the Elegoo Mars printing of castable resins and some of the constraints that we run into as jewelry designers. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up and share. Let's get started. Okay guys, so let's get started. What I've got here is uh, three of the models that I printed and two of them actually didn't come out very well and that's my fault. But I do want to show you why it's my fault and how you can avoid this problem. First we're going to take a look at uh, this navy ring that I was doing for somebody and I did this in the anti-cubic uh, castable resin and if we look closely at it, let's get this in focus here, you can see that the text and the stars along the perimeter of the emblem just didn't print out well. It should say United States Navy on it, and it sadly doesn't. It is uh, it is barely visible, but uh, because of the constraints of the resin, and that kind of happens with almost any resin, uh, using the detail I was trying to use, uh, you're going to find that you're going to lose a lot of the fine detail in your prints because of the way the resin is cured. You know, it drops as a, as a little bubble drip when it's being cured and as the bed goes up and down you get resin to fill in the little gaps and as the UV light cures it, um, it it has a bleeding effect so you will lose a lot of detail unless you plan ahead for that so that's kinda of what I'm showing you here so here's the Anycubic version and here's the uh, iPhone resin uh, same piece uh, printed in their respective settings uh, I've got two videos to show that. I'll try to reference those in the description below. So again, if we look at the detail here, we can see that a lot of it is lost because the text and the stars just didn't print out. Now, that was because I had very fine detail in the emblem and I should have kind of made the text a little bigger. The stars should have been a little bit bigger. And I'll show you an example that did come out very well. And you can see the difference with this Marine Corps version uh, let's get that in focus here. So we've got United States Marine Corps. You can see that the text in the emblem are much more visible, much more detailed, and that's because there was uh, less fine detail in there. The openings were larger, and it helped with the limitations of the resin printers, especially the UV resin printers, because uh, there's no seepage in there, and we, we can create a, a much better style in this. You'll notice that the text is significantly larger in this and uh, that was part of my biggest problem. Again if we compare it to the the detail in the navy version of this uh, the text was very thin and fine the openings in the design just uh, kind of filled in and got solidified with the UV light so that's a problem you're going to have to deal with. Some of you may have already dealt with this, some of you may not have. What I decided to do was print a stress piece and this stress piece I figured I would give it a shot and see how I'll hold this with my tweezers and get it in focus here. The stress piece is basically made so that I can um, take a look at what prints and what doesn't print. and. I've gone from three tenths of a millimeter to the bottom, which is one millimeter in size. Now there is some significant shrinkage in these, so when you're printing just a you know one millimeter two, um, be aware that it will shrink a little bit as the resin kind of falls off of it, and the UV light cures it. This is the iPhone resin, and again, this is a waxy resin, so it's a much softer, more flexible design and it has better burnout properties but I wanted to show you in as much detail as I could <clears throat> bear with me a second that I have a three tenths of a millimeter hair coming up here and this one was printed vertically we have a small protrusion right here and that printed out pretty well but the indent, you can see, um, which should be three tenths of a millimeter, is approximately half that size. And again, that's with the curing of the laser, and the, 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 the resin likes to fill in gaps. And that's kind of what happened with almost every one of these indents. 
So we have less of a, an error here, but if you notice the one millimeter protrusion compared to the indentation, the indentation is much smaller than the protrusion, and these were modeled at the same size. Now, when we look at vertical printing, we have one millimeter, which printed out really well, all the way down to about half a millimeter, which did print well, but you can see it's very flexible. And four tenths of a millimeter, we started to lose a lot of dimension. This actually came out to about 0.25 millimeter, and there were about 0.1 millimeter for that because it was just too small for the, uh, the Alagu Mars to print this. Now, when printing vertically, you'll notice that those came out pretty well. They're straight, they're not bent over, and dimensionally, with the exceptions of the very end, they're fine. Let's look at the horizontal print, and you can see that there's some warping in the resin along the side here, and that's because as the Alagu bed goes up and down, or any UV resin printer, um, there's a suction effect, and it's going to bend and cure at an error the, uh, the horizontal prints. And that's true with just about every single printer. You're never going to get a perfectly good, perfect uh, horizontal bridge across there, but you want to try to accommodate that when you're designing. In the jewelry industry, um, we have a limitation that you should never print anything less than half a millimeter. And I would say if you're going to use your Elegu Mars or your any cubic photon or anything similar to that, I would try to stick within like a 0.6 millimeter. Anything smaller than that's going to get warped. And as we can see here, we've got some warping on the horizontal sides. No warping on the, uh, the vertical print. And this is the any cubic uh, castable resin. So you can see that this printed pretty well, except we only got about a third of the 0.3 millimeter to print, and the rest of it just never went anywhere. Now this is a less waxy resin. It does take longer to cure, so keep that in mind. But we do have the same problem here. We got 0.3 millimeters on the protrusion and about 0.1 millimeter on the indent. And again, that was supposed to be 0.3. And you can see the resin just kind of filled in those gaps. So make sure you accommodate your design to work with that because you're going to have some loss there. And just keep that in mind. It's going to happen with any resin, but especially the castable resins because they are softer, they cure longer, the UV light has to expose them more, and it's something that you need to be aware of. So these are the... Uh, this is a good way to test your resin uh, for limitations in your print. And I would say if um, I were going to continue to use the Elegoo Mars for jewelry casting, that I would probably stick with the minimum of six tenths of a millimeter on any of my fine detail. And again, I get a good indentation, at least it's legible, as well as a protrusion. So keep that in mind. Anything smaller and you're going to start to lose you know, we compare the protrusion here at half a millimeter, and we're at about 0.35 millimeters on the indentation, which should be 0.5. So um, keep that in mind. With the normal uh, Elegoo Mars resin, you're going to have less of an error rate. Um, it does cure quicker, and that's a good thing. But these slow curing resins um, used for casting they're just going to give you some other issues that you're going to have to deal with. So those are the limitations that I found. I'm going to put this model on my website and uh, you can download the STL file and print it in whatever resin you want to print it in. And I hope you enjoy it guys. Good luck. Uh, if you'd like this video, give it a thumbs up. Keep watching. I'm going to put some more up there uh, talking about some of these resins and some of the models. And we're also doing some training on how to use Blender 2.8 for jewelry design. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care. Thanks, guys, for taking the time to watch some of my videos. I really appreciate it. If you like these videos and you find them helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see new stuff that I put out, usually on a weekly basis, hit the subscribe button and you can get notified by clicking on that little bell. 
I really appreciate any uh, sharing that you can do and the thumbs up that I get if you like these videos kind of helps with uh, my channel to grow. You'll see that in the descriptions and on my website I do put affiliate links to products that I show and use in these videos. Those affiliate links uh, give me a little small commission, doesn't cost you anything if you buy them. And when you buy within the first 24 hours of clicking on those links, I get a tiny little commission that helps keep this channel going. Any little bit helps to keep this up and running. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch it. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up and share on social media. Take care, guys. Happy watchmaking and jewelry making.